Hi everyone and welcome to week two of our class. This week we're going to be talking about several standards and guidelines that we can keep in our nutrition toolbox. This week's lectures will be broken into several video segments, so make sure you view them all so that you don't miss anything. First off, let's think about what eating well is and healthy eating. Well, eating well is easy, right? In theory. All you have to do is choose a variety of foods that supply appropriate amounts of essential nutrients fiber, phytochemicals, and energy without excess amounts of fat, sugar, and salt. Okay, easy enough, right? But eating well is a little bit harder than it appears because first, how do we know what foods to eat? How do we know what foods contain those essential nutrients and energy and phytochemicals and fiber and whatever else? How do we know how much of certain foods to eat? And how do we know what is in our food? So eating well is a little bit harder than just choosing an appropriate amount and a variety of foods. Because if eating well was that easy or that simple, we wouldn't have this obesity epidemic in the United States today. Additionally, many people are malnourished as a result of both over and under nutrition because they lack this knowledge of you know, what foods to eat, how much of a piece to eat, and knowing what is in their food. So hopefully the tools that we're going to talk about this week will help you to identify these foods and choose um, and help you eat well. So the first tool we're going to talk about are the dietary reference intake. And these are a set of nutrient reference standards set for healthy people living in the United States and Canada. Keyword here being healthy. So these values, the DRIs, are set for all of the nutrients. Um, so this is going to include all vitamins and minerals, our energy-yielding um, nutrients of carbohydrate, liquids and fats, and protein, fiber, water, and energy. So the DRIs, um, there are several values included in here. We're going to talk about each of these more in the coming slides, but this slide just provides an overview. And I do want to point out that you do need to know these. So we have our estimated average requirement, or the EAR. The recommended dietary allowance, or the RDA, the adequate intake, or the AI, the tolerable upper intake level, or the UL. If you hear someone refer to this as the tolerable upper intake limit, or the upper limit, that's incorrect. So make sure that you know it is the tol tolerable upper intake level. And then finally, we have our acceptable macronutrient distribution range, or the AMDR. So let's dig into these a little bit deeper. So both the RDA, or the Recommended Dietary Allowance, and the AI are recommendations for nutrient intakes or nutrient goals. So the RDA is the average daily nutrient level, nutrient intake level that meets the needs of nearly all, so nearly all being 97 to 98% of healthy people in a particular population. And this population um, is going to be people of a similar life stage and gender group. So you know, women that are over the age of 50, or um, infants under the age of 2, or men between the ages of 18 and 45. So these are very specific to um, life stage and gender group. The RDAs are based on experimental evidence. So we know exactly, we have a pretty good idea of the average daily nutrient intake level that is going to meet the needs of all of these individuals. The AI, or the adequate intake, is the recommended average daily nutrient intake level based on intakes of healthy people in a particular life stage and gender group that are assumed to be adequate. So the difference here is that the AI is set on, is basically scientific evidence and educated guesswork. It's based on observed or experimentally derived numbers. So a nutrient will only have an adequate intake when there's not enough informational evidence to set an RDA. So a nutrient will not have both an RDA or an AI. It will only have one or the other. So keep that in mind when you do your discussion board posts this week. Next we have the EAR and the UL, and both of these are used in setting nutrient recommendations. So the EAR is the average daily nutrient intake estimated to meet the requirement of half of the healthy individuals in a particular life stage and gender group. So our RDA was set to meet nearly all of the people in our group, and the EAR is set to meet half of the people. 
So the EAR is important because, again, it's used for nutrient recommendations and it's used in nutrition research and policy to make these recommendations. The UL is the highest average daily nutrient intake level that is likely to pose no risk of toxicity to almost all healthy individuals of said life stage and gender group. So the UL, or remember this is our tolerable upper intake level, is set to identify potentially hazardous intakes of nutrient intake. So this goes back to the idea that more is not always better. Too much can be bad. But not all nutrients will have an established um, UL. And this could be because there's not enough evidence, or maybe this nutrient doesn't pose any toxicity no matter how much you consume. So an example might be um, a water-soluble nutrient that's not stored in our body for a long period of time. So you'd have to consume a lot for it to be toxic. So again, keep in mind that not all nutrients will have a UL. So next, let's look at this graph that does a nice job of representing um, all of the di different DRI values. So we can see as we move from one side to the other, so our risk of inadequacy increases when we have very low intake, whereas when we move this direction and we move up to our risk of excess or our higher intakes, this increases our risk of excess or toxicity. So some things to point out on our graph here. Remember, the EAR is going to meet about half of our population's needs, so 50%. The RDA is going to meet nearly all, or 97 to 98% of our population's needs. And then we have quite a range in here where we can consume over the RDA and be okay. But once we consume more than our UL, we could have some negative side effects or increase our risk of toxicity. So remember that UL is the highest level that can, can be consumed without being too much. And again, as we move from one side to the other, as our intake increases, the risk of deficiency decreases. Next, let's talk about the AMDR, or the Acceptable Macronutrient Distribution. So our macronutrients are energy-yielding nutrients. So these, again, are carbohydrates, fats, lipids, um, and then protein. So the AMDR are ranges of intake set for the energy-yielding nutrients that are sufficient to provide adequate total energy and nutrients while minimizing the risk of chronic disease. So these are expressed as percentages of daily caloric intake. So for carbohydrates, our range for AMDR is 45 to 65, fats is 20 to 35, and protein is 10 to 35. So what does this really mean? So basically, you would take the total calories that you consume, or your recommended intake of calories, and multiply this by both percentages for said macronutrient, and that would give you a range of calories to come from that macronutrient. So let's do an example. So if you're on a 2,000 calorie diet, what you would want to do to figure out how many calories count need to come from carbohydrates is take 2,000 times 45% or 0.45. That's going to give you 900 calories. For our um, upper range, we would take 2,000 times 0.65, and that's going to give us 1,300 calories. So our range of calories from carbohydrates would be from 900 to 1,300. So as long as, let's say we analyze our diet and we see that I'm consuming 1,000 calories from carbohydrates, I fall within my range of 900 to 1,300 calories, or 45 to 65%. So we'll talk more about what these mean um, when we address our chapters on each of these macronutrients and when you do your dietary analysis project. But this is really meant to just be an introduction for the time being. So how do we use the DRI intake recommendations, and what do they really mean? So it is important to note that there are differences between individuals and then our recommendations for population. So remember that the DRIs, there are separate recommendations for gender groups, so male and female, and then for different age ranges. So that being, um, you know, old, older, younger, infants, children. When we look at women um, in particular, we also have separate recommendations for both pregnant and lactating women. Um, again, these recommendations are for healthy people. So someone that has a deficiency of, say, calcium or vitamin D, the DRI is not going to apply to them because they're not considered healthy. 
And for one of those individuals, the amount that may be recommended for them by the doctor may actually be in that um, UL range. So they may have, you know, toxicity, but because they had an original deficiency, it's not really their own UL. So just keep in mind that these recommendations and pretty much all the recommendations that we're going to talk about are for healthy people. Um, some other characteristics of the DRIs to keep in mind and just be mindful of are that these values are based on available scientific research and they're updated periodically whenever there's new knowledge. So we're going to talk about the dietary guidelines in another segment. Those are updated every five years. The DRIs, on the other hand, are only updated when there's um, enough new evidence to warrant an update. These values are based on the concepts of probability and risk, and they're recommendations for optimal intake and not minimum requirements. So again, they include this generous margin of safety. So think about that wide range we had between um, when we look at the graph from the RDA to the UL. So a large margin of safety. Um, the values are set to provide or allow for nutrient adequacy and not necessarily to prevent deficiency symptoms only. So thinking about the functions of these different nutrients and not only just what a deficiency of um, them might be. And then these DRIs represent adequate intake over time. So just because you don't get enough calcium, say on Monday, the idea behind the DRIs is that over a few days or over um, a week's time, your intake will be adequate enough to um, be sufficient for those times when your intake did not meet recommendations. So your body stores um, will, will basically cover you for whenever your intake is a little bit lower. So the values are set plenty high um, to ensure that your stores, your body stores will be able to do this. All right, so the last piece of um, this segment is about sudden energy requirements. So estimated energy requirements are the average dietary energy intake predicted to maintain energy balance in a healthy adult of a certain age, gender, weight, height, and level of physical activity that is consistent with good health. These are predicted to maintain healthy body weight and to discourage unhealthy weight gain. So the AMDR values, so remember our expected macronutrient distribution ranges for calcium, or for, excuse me, for carbohydrate, protein, and fat, these um, ranges will help to achieve a healthy balance of the nutrients and also help to prevent this unhealthy weight gain. There is no UL for energy, so there is going to be um, those other values that we talked about, but there's no UL because even small amounts of excess energy will contribute to weight gain over time, and any sort of weight gain, especially over time, can have negative effects on health and may be associated with disease, so there is no UL. Um, and remember that energy, you don't just eat energy, you eat foods that contain energy. And in foods that contain energy, the energy is coming from carbohydrate, fat, and protein, which is why our, our AMDRs are important within this um, concept as well. So that concludes our video on the dietary reference intakes. Um, and we'll, the other, again, the other videos will address some of the other tools we'll be talking about this week. See you soon.